Hi, this video is a part of deep learning with TensorFlow playlist. In this playlist, I quickly explain the logic and implementation of deep learning algorithms and applications using TensorFlow. Note that I do not code long, rather I make use of pen for explaining the tricky parts of code so that you people can read the notebooks and re-implement them yourself. Code files for each video will be given in the description. So I'm expecting my audience to have a good understanding of deep learning algorithms and they just need little hints for implementation of these algorithms. In this video, I'll talk about simple auto encoders, which is kind of principal component analysis, but with added non-linearity. Auto encoders are principal component analysis is actually a dimensionality reduction algorithm where our aim is to reduce the dimension of input space. Now let's jump to the whiteboard and notebook to understand the idea and code it in Python. Okay, so let's talk about PCA autoencoder, simple PCA autoencoder. Okay, let me show you this architecture. This is the architecture of simple PCA autoencoder, uh, where we have this input layer. This is a dense layer, and this is the dimensions that we want as an output. So this is like code. This is what we are calling code. This is again the dense layer. Both of these are usually having same dimensions. And then we are having output. This output is equivalent to uh, this input. So what we want is to reproduce this input here uh, while encoding this uh, input into this lower dimensions. So input feature might have suppose four, five, six, seven, eight dimension, and this uh, encoded features might have only three dimensions. So our aim is to basically reproduce this input here by minimizing the mean square error. So we have kind of uh, how many, this is kind of a regression problem where our outputs are having total number of uh, outputs equal to total number of input features. So we want to minimize the mean square error uh, while learning the weights uh, in between uh, for these dense layer and this code layer and this dense layer. Uh, so somehow uh, in a way, what we do is uh, we first of all encode our, our input image into lower dimension. This is the encoding part. This is the encoding part and then we decode it using this encoded part as an input. So these are two different parts of this autoencoder. One is encoder, the another one is decoder. So this is how, if I may write it out, we are having this input layer, then dense layer, then output dimension. Once we have this output dimension as input, then we have again this dense layer and we then reproduce this input. This is linear uh, PCA, but if you want to bring this non-linearity, then we can add more and more dense layers. That is where uh, this autoencoder idea is better than simple PCA. And uh, once we have all of these dense layers and we have this output dimension encoded, then we use this output dimension encoded as an input again for the decoder. So this is like encoder part. This is the decoder part and the de decoder part. Uh, we also have these dense layers and this uh, we reproduce this input. So the dimension of this dense layer is usually equal to this last dense layer. So just let me let me change the color so it may make sense it may make more sense so uh, the dimension of this uh, dense layer this output dimension is equal to having dimension equal to this is like the same thing then dense layer will be having dimensions equal to this last dense layer and uh, this dense layer uh, will be equal to the second last one and the last dense layer will be equal to the second one dense layer in the encoded part so this is like uh, this is like what is shown here where we are having both of this uh, second last and the second one uh, dense layers having almost same dimensions. Okay, so in a way, this is this is how it goes in a funnel type shape, where we just create this bottleneck, and this bottleneck is what we are learning. This is what we are calling encoder, and after this uh, uh, bottleneck, what we are learning in encoder is uh, this decoder, where we are having this encoder as an input. We want to reproduce these actual input features here. So this is the basic encoder decoder structure. Okay, we will encode it. Uh, the encoding part is easy, but before that, let me show you one more thing. There is one technical detail uh, for uh, using the simple PCA autoencoders for images. And that is we have, because image is in a two dimension, so we have to flatten it so that to create this one dimension input features. Suppose we have this 50 cross 50 image. So once we flatten it, then we will be having total dimension of 250 hidden units. Uh, this will be input layer and then we have again dense layer then output then this output will be used as an input for decoder and this again will be applied dense layer both of them will be having same dimension here we flattened it but uh, in this part we are not flattening it instead we are resizing it to 50 cross 50 image so this image is what we have reproduced then we try to minimize the error uh, by reproducing this image and in the process what we have done is we have encoded it into smaller features so this is like for image compression so this is what we are saying that we are compressing the image. So this is what we call image compression. 
okay but uh because images have this special structure uh, where uh, we are having um uh, these individual features not basically independent uh the feature information in this red box in this red pixel is actually dependent upon its surrounding pixels also so this structure is actually well used and well utilized uh, within cnns and convolutional neural networks for that reason what we will do is uh, we will use these convolutional neural networks instead of this simple neural uh, simple dense layers in convolutional neural network autoencoders and that i'll discuss in the next video but in this video we'll be using the simple pca autoencoder where we are having this dense layers uh, in in cnn autoencoders we will be having con layers and pooling layers uh, and then we will also have deconvolution in decoder part uh, and uh, up uh, up pooling so where we are uh, upgrading our, our upsizing our uh, whole image that is what we will be seeing so this is encoder part and this is decoder part and you do not worry about that in this video because that is what i will be explaining in the next video however the idea is that we want to uh, use this structure of image uh, using the cnns instead of simple dense layers in this auto encoders i hope so this idea makes sense if this makes makes sense then then let me go to the uh, notebook uh, where where i'll be explaining this whole idea okay so we will begin with this uh, importing the libraries this is something related to data set that we will be using these are faces data set then these are loading the images so we load uh, the images we center it around zero this is uh, this revision of 0 2.255 will give us values between 0 to 1 once we subtract the 0 0.5 so our final values of images will be between minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 so we have centered it around zero then we split it between 90 10 then this is a function to show image and this is where we are showing different images that we'll be applying auto encoder on so uh, this is the encoder architecture uh, where uh, we will be just applying the simple pca and uh, in in simple pca our uh, input is actually having uh, dense layers and dense layer will output this code size and this code size will uh, then use as an input uh, having this uh, and then and will generate this dense layer and then dense layer will be reshaped into this image so this is as simple as it see it as, as it is i mean it's it's really easy once you understand this keras uh, sequential api so inside this function of build pc auto encoder we are uh, we are building these two different networks one is encoder and another one is decoder and we are returning both these encoder and decoder networks so we are in we are inputting this image shape uh, and this code size code size is actually uh, the reduced dimension that we want eventually okay so this is kind of a bottleneck of uh, of that funnel that i i explained okay now uh, once we have this sequential api the important uh, aspect of sequential api is that each next layer is expecting the input uh, the output of previous layer as an input so the first layer will be this input layer uh, this input layer this input layer having uh, this image shape once we have this input layer then this flatten layer is, is expecting this above layer to be input so uh, once we have this image shape in 50 comma 50 uh, then flatten layer will make it uh, 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 250 a value of 250 so it will flatten the image to a single vector then uh, this is an actual encoder where we are, we are applying this dense vector uh, of having code size hidden neurons once we have that then uh, this will output uh, this code size equal like uh, this this will output this encoded uh values once we have these encoded values so our encoder is complete so this is our encoder the output of encoder is giving us this encoded size this is what we want from the encoder once we have that then we will apply this decoder using this encoded code size so in decoder we have the sequential api and uh, our input is basically this code size uh this layer this input layer will be containing the neurons or the uh the uh, hidden layer size equal to this code size and then we will apply this dense layer uh, equal to this image shape because we have to reshape it in in the next line uh, to reconstruct the, our image so this is our decoder uh, these are only four line of code for decoder and four line of code for encoder and it is as it is very simple if you really understand the basic of tensorflow okay once we have done that then we have uh, we just clear the session we apply we build this pca auto encoder and we return this encoder and decoder then what we do is we given this input uh, we we give input to the encoder so this is the feed forward in the feed forward when we give input to the encoder we get this code size as an output then this output for code will be given as an input to the decoder and it will give us this value of reconstruction so this is a reconstructed image that de this decoder network is giving us given this code and this code is actually outputted using this encoder uh, network okay so the whole model the whole graph will will look like this coming from this input and having this reconstructed output and our our aim is to uh, decrease is to make both of them as equal as possible so we want this reconstructed images as close to these actual original images as possible uh, while encoding it into this code size 
because this reconstructed image is actually uh, produced using this code so if the reconstructed image is is as close as input image so it means that it is reconstructing using this code uh, code size uh, this code layer neurons uh, this code is actually generated using this encoder input so uh, this auto encoder will be having a graph from input to this reconstruction and this is what we where we are compiling the optimizer and loss function uh, then we fit the data once we have fitted the data then we visualize it uh, this is how it looks like so this is the pca mean square error of 0.0065 simple uh, auto encoder mean square error uh, and these are some examples where this is our original image uh, this is encoded image and this is reconstructed image this is again our original image this is encoded uh, image uh, and this is a reconstructed image from this encoded image so the original image is actually 28 cross uh, the 32 cross 32 uh, but this encoded image is actually having only uh, 16 comma 2 so like 32 total values so it has uh, it has really captured a lot of information uh, inside this encoded uh, vector however uh, as we can see that there are a lot of blurness and and uh, and the quality of image has been has been lost because of this uh, this encoding and and, uh, and 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 you know uh, compressing a lot of information into this single vector okay i hope so this makes sense uh, and next we will be simply using this convolutional neural network for the same task uh, in the next video uh, if you have understood this uh, i mean uh, you have uh, just opened uh, the door uh, for a great variety of different types of autoencoders this is the very first step and we will be doing a lot of tasks uh, even image generation and image denizing and image morphing with different type of variational autoencoders and there are a lot of different autoencoders that we will be using in the next videos so make sure that you understand this idea of encoder and decoder uh, theoretically as well as as this this implementation uh, once you have the sequential api we will be later using using maybe functional API, uh, which is a little different and I'll be explaining that. And uh, I, and I have already explained in the previous videos, if you have seen my lot of videos, so in, in a lot of videos, I've explained this difference of sequential API and functional API where uh, where we are where in functional API, we do not assume that uh, input layer, uh, the out, the input layer for the current layer is is an output from the previous layer. So in, in this sequential API, this assumption is there that every next layer is having input from this previous layer output. So I hope so this makes sense now.